Shalom and shalom and welcome to yet another funky Bible sermon. So today's uh, sermon is titled Reflections on Idolatry and Its Consequences. In the 14th chapter of the Wisdom of Solomon, the narrative delves into the consequences of idolatry, highlighting the foolishness of worshiping things made by human hands. The contrast contracts, or, sorry, the text contrasts the trusted placed in lifeless idols with the providence of the true creator. The key themes, providence and trust in God. The chapter begins by drawing a sharp contrast between the piece of wood crafted by a workman and the providence of God. It emphasizes that even when people sail through raging waves on weak vessels, it is God's providence that governs and ensures safety. This underscores the message of putting trust in the creator rather than in human made objects. Blessedness and righteousness. The text declares that the blessed is the wood by the which righteousness comes. This is likely a reference to the wood of the cross, a symbol of Christ's sacrifice and the redemption of humanity. It draws attention to the transformative power of righteousness compared to the curse associated with man-made idols. Cursedness of man-made idols. The chapter strongly condemns idols made by human hands, declaring them cursed. Both the idols and those who made them are considered cursed. The text reasons that calling upon corruptible objects God you know, the small g, is a small, is a, is a curse, emphasizing the absurdity and the futility of idol worship, origins, and the end of idols. The passage explores the origin of idols, suggesting that they entered uh, the world through the vein of glory of men. However, it asserts that they will come to an end, highlighting the transcendent nature of idolatry. The text critiques the deception caused by attributing divine attributes to lifeless objects. Evolution of idol worship. The chapter explains how idol worship born out of ignorance evolved into a custom and then a law. It described the progression from creating images to establishment of rituals and ceremonies associated with idol worship. The influence of the authority figures and art artificers is noted in promoting the idolatrous practice. Consequences of idolatry. Idolatry is linked with various societal ills, including bloodshed, corruption, unfaithfulness, and disorder in marriages. The text connects idol worship with a decline in moral and ethical standards, suggesting that when people turn away from the true God, they fall into destructive behaviors. And vengeance of sinners. The concluding verses highlight the punishment of idolatry is not inflicted by the idols themselves, which have no power, but it is a just consequence brought about by sin. Those who swear falsely, trusting in uh, lifeless idols, will face punishment due to their lack of reverence for God. Implications for today. Number one, trust in providence. The text encourages a deep trust in God's providence, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in the midst of life's challenges and uncertainties. The narrative emphasizes the Creator governs and provides a safe path. Number two, cautions against idolatry. The chapter serves as a cautionary tale against the worship of man-made idols in contemporary times. This can be extended to include materialism, the uh, defecation of ideologies, and the pursuit of false gods. Number three, blessedness of righteousness. Righteousness is presented as a source of blessing. This echoes the Christian understanding of the transformative power of Christ's sacrifice on the cross, symbolizing by the blessed wood. Number four, recognition of trans transience. Idolatry is portrayed as a transient phenomenon that will come to an end. This, challenge indivi this challenges individuals to reflect on the enduring nature of their beliefs and practices. Number five, social consequences. The association of idolatry and the society, uh, societal ills underscores the broader impact of spiritual beliefs on individual and collective behavior. It prompts reflection on ethical and moral implications of one's beliefs. Responsibility and consequences. The text underscores the consequence, uh, consequences result from the human actions. Whether it's trusting idols or engaging in falsehood, individuals are accountable for their choices. It suggests a responsibility to choose wisely and live in accordance with righteousness. As readers reflect on this chapter, it prompts deeper examination of personal beliefs, trust in God's providence, and ethical implications of societal values and practices. Shalom and shalom until next time. May God keep you and bless you. Heavenly Father, I just pray that, that you would continue to lay your hands over all of us, including myself and the viewer God.
and anyone else that's that that you love, Lord, to keep us away from these idolatrous uh, practices, Father. We have adultery, which you don't like, and then we have idolatry, which for many, maybe for me too, <laughs> would get confused so often as being the same thing. They're not the same thing. And Jesus won the battle over both of them and all of them. But we do have to seek who is the true God. And we don't want to call something else that is not God, God. And we don't want to call ourselves God either because you are God. You created us. We didn't create ourselves. We didn't create everything around us. So we just thank you, Lord, and we praise you, Lord, for all that you've done and all that you are and all that you are over us. And we pray this in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen and amen. Shalom and shalom until next time. May God keep you and bless you. Bye for now.